prequel is a movie about old people before they're old, and what happens when you tell a woman no. Being a prequel to the movie X, Pearl is set in 1918, right at the tail end of the First World War and right at the beginning of the influenza pandemic. You come home from the war, your wife has cheated on you with the mailman, you're scared of fireworks, and now you're dying of influenza. The movie begins in the exact same farmhouse from X, with almost the exact same shot, before seeing a now much younger Pearl being told off by her German immigrant mother for wearing one of her dresses. Germans must really hate fashion. Pearl, being a perfectly normal, well-adjusted member of society, talks to her farm animals like their people while dancing around in an innocent, whimsical manner before spotting the evil of all evils. A goose, and it must die. And in a tradition that she'd uphold for almost 70 years, she drives her pitchfork through it before taking it to the lake to feed the local alligator because she's really just a good person who cares about the local wildlife. We see that Pearl's father is suffering from the unfortunate condition known as can't move, so Pearl is forced to feed her sick immobile father, as well as bathing in front of him too, but I don't think that one's forced. During the midst of a global pandemic, and overworked children in Vietnam not quite able to be abused for monetary gain in the West, Pearl's forced to head to town to do some shopping instead of ordering it online. And after picking up her father's medicine, she stops by the movies, swigs a little bit of harmless liquid morphine for some of its medicinal effects, before being approached by the projection he invites her back to watch the next picture for free, which is essentially just Netflix and chill in old timey talk, but she needs to leave before her mother notices that she's been gone for too long. Fun simply wasn't accepted in the early 1900s. He cuts her off a frame from the movie she just watched, but it blows away as she rides home, causing her to enter a cornfield to search for it. She doesn't find the frame, but instead a scarecrow that she proceeds to do perfectly normal and totally not questionable things with, like sticking her tongue in its mouth before throwing it to the floor and screaming she's married as if she isn't the one who's going to be picking straw out of her mouth for a week, and proceeding to climb on top of it to pleasure herself where she'll be pulling straw out of not her mouth for a week. That night, while bathing in front of her dad again, because apparently she just can't help but be really clean and weird, she begins pinching his finger while looking for a reaction, but judging by the fact that he's completely paralysed and doomed to spend the rest of his soulless life trapped in a meat sack, there is no reaction. This prompts the really clean and also really weird Pearl to begin strangling him to death. But just kidding, only a little bit. It's nothing but a harmless bit of quadriplegia asphyxiation. Kids will be kids. The next day, as she's busy talking to farm animals, because she's definitely not extremely schizophrenic, she watches as one of those newfangled automobiles arrive at the farm. It's the upper class coming to spit on the poor. And by that, I mean it's Howard's sister and her sister-in-law named Mitzi. She stopped by with her mother to deliver a gift that any young woman would die for. Ham. And while talking to Pearl, she tells her about an upcoming dance audition that could see the winner touring the country, which apparently brings out the inner zoo file in Pearl as she smooches a cow. So that night, Pearl sneaks out of the house to visit the projectionist, the closest thing that she has to a friend. Except that poor cow. And after telling him the news, he gives her a personal private screening of a movie that he's never shown anyone before. Three random people going at it in a field. Sounds like a date, to be honest. The next morning, Pearl pushes her dad out to the lake and calls over the alligator, just like she did with the goose. And you can see that, even with his very limited mobility, his eyes are screaming, I should have pulled out. But before her dad can go in for a dip, she's interrupted by her mother at the last second and plays it off as if she wasn't just about to drop a paralysed man into the forbidden bath. While having dinner later that night, Pearl tells her mother about the dance audition, which results in her mother basically saying, Nah, you suck. Which unsurprisingly results in an argument with her slapping Pearl and Pearl slapping her back. And apparently her mother wants to show off her Brazilian jiu-jitsu moves and grabs onto Pearl, causing Pearl to push her backwards into the fireplace and watches her mother's life hack for an instant suntan, resulting in Pearl throwing a pot of boiling water over her to extinguish the flames. And her mother's existence. She drags her extra crispy, well-done mother down into the basement before going to get her priorities in check banging the projectionist dude. That night, while her mother is locked in the basement, suffering from extreme burns, she dreams of herself on stage, seeing Howard, her father and her mother in the crowd, before her mother removes a mask to reveal that she ate a pizza roll before leaving it to cool down. She wakes up and rushes off in a panic because she needs to practice for her audition. And you know, not to help her deep fried mother who's currently locked in a basement. So the projectionist drives her back to the farm, before she decides to take him upstairs into her room so they can taste test each other's saliva, because apparently the smell of burnt mother flesh really gets her in the mood. But he gets up, after repeatedly hearing a banging coming from the basement that Pearl just keeps shrugging off. 
After he finds the mess from last night in the dining room, she explains it away as it being their dog and she locked him in the cellar. She's then way too enthusiastic about the presence of farm animals, which becomes slightly concerning for the projectionist as it's apparent that her childish-like demeanour is putting him off a bit. After she tells him the names of the farm animals, he asks her what's her dog's name and apparently Pearl's better at killing relatives than she is at lying as she immediately, without hesitation, says that she doesn't have a dog, with him really hoping that he'd be able to pet the dog because burnt women just don't hit the same. He makes up an excuse and tries to leave, which in turn causes Pearl to go from her whimsical childlike mood to my ex-girlfriend after half a bottle of red wine and begins violently screaming at him before burying a pitchfork into his chest as he tries to drive away. Yep, just like my ex-girlfriend. Once the car comes to a stop, she pulls him out as if she's been playing too much Grand Theft Auto lately before driving the pitchfork into his mouth and stamping it all the way in, because screw this guy apparently. She forces her mother into a game of roly-poly after finding her at the top of the stairs, before bathing her father again, because he must be sweaty after a long day of absolutely nothing, before taking a pillowcase and suffocating him. What a waste of some perfectly good water. She pushes the projectionist and his car into the lake for her funny looking dog before riding her bike to the audition to meet Mitzi. An audition where she imagines herself on a large stage with a group of backup dancers as she dances her heart out. Only to make like Eminem and to be snapped back into reality with the harsh words of no by one of the judges. Pearl's one and only ticket out of the farm and into stardom. But as we all know, She's forced to live out the rest of her days as a reclusive sex pest, doing fun things like torturing naked people in her basement. She's dragged off stage screaming and begging for help, showing more emotion than that time she brutally killed three people. Mitzi drives her back home, and after doing a cry, she tells Mitzi that she thinks there's something wrong with her. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. So Mitzi offers to pretend to be Howard so that Pearl can talk to her husband and get everything off her chest, which is exactly what she does, as she proceeds to list off all of the horrific activities of the last few days, including, but not limited to, setting her mother on fire, suffocating her father, cheating on her husband, and separating some guy's spinal cord. Oh, and she kissed a cow. After about 10 minutes of talking about her feelings, yuck, she eventually looks up to see Mitzi's terrified reaction as she desperately tries to hold it all together. Pearl then tells her that she's glad she got the part, which is apparently news to Mitzi as she didn't get the part, before Mitzi realises that it's best to just go along with it and accept anything that Pearl says on account of her being entirely psychotic and slightly murderous, which then causes Pearl's entire demeanour to suddenly change as she's overcome with jealousy. She follows Mitzi outside, past her apparently now invisible automobile, before picking up an axe and chasing her. But what Mitzi doesn't realise is that Pearl is farm strong. She repeatedly hits her in the back with it until eventually she falls to the floor begging for Pearl to please stop. But Pearl isn't a quitter and is here to see things through, so she lifts the axe and brings it down onto her face. She heads down into the basement for some good old fashioned cadaver cuddling before taking her mother upstairs to brush her hair. Brush it off her scalp. She disposes of Mitzi by chopping her into bite-sized chunks so her aquatic friend doesn't choke, and sits her parents down at the dining table for one final dinner together. Some time passes, and Howard eventually returns home from four horrifically long years of killing Germans to be greeted to the sight of two dead Germans sitting at his dining room table. He then turns to see Pearl standing there with a completely normal and totally natural smile as the movie comes to an end. So before we bring things to an end, I'd just like to give a massive shout out to all of my YouTube members and patrons. People who help the channel out every month, which is extremely appreciated, considering that YouTube has made it apparent that they're not a fan of this type of content. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron yourself, you get access to bonuses like the private Discord, where you then get access to all uncensored videos going forward. So starting off with this week's YouTube members, a big thank you to Alanius Plus, Sean Stanley, Stephen McComas, Aidan Smith, Nikolai Schaff, William Ward, Simon Lucas, Thomas Webb, Stephen McGuckin, Dakota Underwood, John Fran, Sen, Kana HCH, Ayumi Hayim, Gaming Kitty X, Tree Defer, and Atine Van Rensburg. And moving over to Patreon, a big thank you to this week's signups A underscore 196, Jake Paolilo, Blackout the Cat, Steamed Hams, Jacob Brown, Cody Savage, Austin D, Brandado Farris, Whoopin Gangster, John Jessen, Tom Louie, Castle Lavender, Gala Gaming, Noah Holiday, Jack Tyson, Space, Exabusters, Chayara Siegel, Mercy Finn, Grace Hannay, Ray, Billiam, Bobby Lovash, Jared Beckford, Lane Campbell, and Caleb LeBlanc. So once again, a massive thank you to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching.